All right, let's talk about Tua. Tua is always interesting to talk about. Definitely someone who, uh, you know, hot button topic. Some people think he's, uh, you know, the next superstar in this league. Some people think he's not very good at all. Uh, I've always kind of been in the middle of, I feel like, the biggest Tua haters and the biggest Tua defenders. Uh, But I think I've definitely come closer to the biggest Tua defenders over this past last season. I thought he did a lot of things really well, but instead of me talking about what I think he did well, let's get into the film and let's show uh, just the whole picture, what he did well, what he did uh, poorly, and everything in between. Let's just get into it. So first, let's start off with something like this. So what's going to happen on this play is it's zone coverage that the Baltimore Ravens are in, and for uh, Tua, this is kind of something that I feel like often gets looked at as a negative with Tua. I don't necessarily view it this way, but you know, I said just a second ago that I want to show his good, his bad, and everything in between. This is definitely a play that I would consider one of the in-between plays. Watch how right when this play begins, and you know, this is one of the things that's a little bit difficult about making film studies just in general, is you're not in the huddle, and while if you watch enough film, uh, you definitely can start to, you know, pick up on how teams tend to do things, how they like to make their reads, stuff like that, but the reality is, we don't know if this is the play where it's designed to get the ball to the halfback from the jump, or if that's just his second read, but what we do know is right now, he is looking further down the field, and it appears as though there are routes that, you know, could be at least somewhat trying to get open. I believe that the check down route is purely his next read. And so Tua is going to simply just flip it to his halfback, who's going to do some good stuff in open space and pick up a first down, actually. So there's several ways you could take that play. Some people will take it as, well, okay, you're a check down Charlie. All you do is throw check downs. Who cares about check downs? Anyone can throw a check down. Now, the flip side is that anyone can't throw a check down. We've seen it before that guys do struggle at not just throwing a check down. Anyone except for Zach Wilson can hit that check down, right? Uh, that's totally fine. The The question that maybe uh, is, is better is, do you hit the check down when you should? And the best quarterbacks, you know, the, across the board, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, you know, whatever you want to say, they hit the check downs. They get the yardage that is there and they hit it quickly and Tua does do that. So to me, I do consider this a positive that he's able to do this stuff. Yes, it's more impressive when you make the, you know, off balance throw, uh, you know, 50 yards down the field. Sure, those are the more impressive ones, but they're not always available. You can't always throw the ball that far down the field. And if you can't get the best uh, you know, play that you can get, get the most yardage you can get on a specific play. And that's what Tua is capable of doing. You also have stuff like this where this is really where I think Tua thrives is his timing and his accuracy paired together really is what allows him to be a very effective quarterback and run this offense especially really well where the way this play works is it's going to be a zone coverage play and you have uh, a receiver who's going to eventually try to basically the way it works actually is that you have one receiver running more of a clear out route pushes the safeties further deep hopefully gets you know a linebacker out of position and the receiver eventually kind of follows him gets into a gap and coverage. That's what you're trying to have happen here. Watch how when this play begins, you see that it is relatively working. There appears to be a window about to open up, but not a massive one. And again, the timing is going to have to be key here as it's not going to be open for very long. But Tua doesn't hesitate, throws right away, and makes a very accurate throw to get a completion. And these are the things that we see Tua do very uh, you know, consistently. And it's something that I would say he's gotten better as his career has gone on at doing this stuff. And he was already good at it but again really getting that timing perfectly down and being able to make you know these throws consistently is what allowed him to be a really good quarterback last year and you know we would assume could be a very good quarterback this next year Let's head over to this play now, now going against the Cleveland Browns. This is another good example of like, I think again, you could look at that stuff and say, okay, well that's good and all, and it is, I I think everyone agrees, there is value in that, even if you're a Tua hater, you understand there is value in that, but I think some people would argue, well, is he just a game manager type? Is he just Kirk Cousins? Which, there's nothing wrong with that, but the odds of you winning a Super Bowl with that seem pretty slim. I would argue there's other things he does to elevate him above just a game manager, despite the fact that it's still in a game manager situation, if that makes any sense. And this play will, you know, explain what I am talking about. So again, 
way to play works pretty simple it's that stuff that Miami is trying to get you to you know get defenses in right of let's be a team that can you know get teams in zone coverage and then really take advantage when they're in zone coverage two is going to take the snap and you see that there is a window to make this throw the issue is look at where the receiver is in relation to that window, right? This is where things get a little bit tricky because the goal is always to get a receiver to just be in the middle of the gap in coverage to make it as easy as possible for the quarterback to get there. But given certain route concepts and certain ways that people defend this, like, you know, a linebacker coming in now and trying to get in, you know, in the way of the throw. In these specific situations, it's not so easy to, you know, it, it just doesn't always work out where you can get a receiver right in the middle of the gap in coverage. And one thing they teach you is that don't throw it to where the receiver is, throw it to where the gap in coverage is. You got to throw it to where the defenders aren't because it's more important to make sure the defender doesn't touch it. And if your receiver has to make a tough catch, then so be it. And Tua's going to do that in a very subtle way here. Watch this throw that's just a bit behind. It's nothing crazy because, again, if you throw it too far behind, then it won't be complete either you do have to at the end of the day make put it in a spot where your receiver can make the catch but you put it in a spot where your receiver can make the catch while throwing it away from the defender that's what Tua did very effectively on that play and that's what Tua does a very very effectively on those plays just in general and he does it consistently and again the consistency thing is always so hard to really convey in these film studies. One of the reasons I also make some of those like stats videos and stuff like that is because I want to talk about how it's not just the, uh, you know, I, I want to bring up that, you know, the consistency and, and things like that. I don't like just talking about film because there can't, it can't be misleading as well. Everyone talks about how stats can be misleading. Film can be misleading as well. But as of right now, just take my word for it. He does it consistently. And if you don't take my word for it, check out some stats because they also show that he does it consistently. Like one more play uh, to showcase what he can do. This is going to be man coverage. And I think that, you know, a lot of people might wonder, okay, a lot of what I've shown is zone coverage. Can he be effective, uh, you know, in against man coverage? How good can he be in that situation? And the reality is uh, a big chunk of it is going to come down to your receiver talent when you're in man coverage. Watch how when this play begins, you're going to see that right here, there is a, a window to make this throw, I would say, right there. You have a receiver who's, uh, you know, that's Jalen Waddle in a pretty good spot right here past the defender who's trying to cover him. But again, you do have to notice this and you do have to put the ball in position for your receiver to be able to make the grab. As you see, Tua does that, and you're able to get a big completion right there. So he can take advantage of that stuff. And the reality is, as long as they have Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell, their teams aren't going to be playing a ton of man coverage for single safety deep. That's not going to happen too often, or even two safety deeps. Uh, that's not going to be a thing that happens very frequently, because those guys are going to win consistently. And again, you can maximize uh, what to it as well. That's part of why I love that Tyree kill trade. Loved it for a lot of reasons, but one of the things I loved about it was it felt like it was going to force teams into defenses that Tua takes advantage of and Tua thrives in, and we've seen that so far in Miami. At least that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.